Today I'm making a strawberry mojito sparkling water. I have a lot of sober friends and I'm having a little party at my house this weekend so I wanted to have something to serve for them and I actually just took suggestions from them and strawberry was suggested and then mint and I was like well what do you get when you make mix strawberry and mint? You add lime and make a mojito. So I'm hoping this turns out well. Uh, I've never made it before. Uh, I have made some other sparkling waters that have turned out great. And so I'm gonna make two and a half gallons. Um, I'm gonna put it in a normal corny keg and carbonate it that way. But before I do that, I'm gonna juice my strawberries and limes. I'm probably just going to uh, kind of mash up my mint a little bit after I sanitize it. Um, all of this stuff, uh, the lime and the strawberries, I'm going to pasteurize because I don't know how long this is going to sit in my kegerator. Um, I've had sparkling water sit in there for months before because I just kind of forget that I have it on top. And so I don't want any bugs to get in or just anything living on the strawberries, um, you know, just no bad stuff that is going to make my sparkling water either turn into alcohol or turn into garbage. All right, so I've got my Jack LaLanne juicer. Fun fact, I used to work at a juice shop for a long time, and I absolutely hate juicing things now because of it, um, but Sometimes it's necessary. So I've got this guy from back then and uh, it works pretty good. I'm gonna get started. So I always try to take off the crap on top. I'm actually going to pull all the greens off before I even start the juicer. I bought pretty ripe strawberries um, because a lot of times they're a little sweeter and this sparkling water is going to get no sugar. It's going to solely rely on the strawberries to sweeten it. And like, you know, you get a richer strawberry taste if you get the riper ones rather than a tartness, which we're going to get from the limes. All right, we are good. I'm going to turn this guy on. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in uh, my like soup pot thing. Um, so we're gonna pasteurize it by heating up to, I haven't actually looked it up yet, but I will in a second. Um, we're gonna heat it a little bit though for an extended period of time so that it doesn't cook the juice, but it kills any bugs that are in it. So now on to our limes. Um, when you juice limes, do not do the rind. Um, I feel like that's obvious, but I've been working in food for a long time, so I don't know. Um, so the rind is obviously the bitter part. Um, and can we look at how big these limes are? This is a perk of Southern California. Um, these are like the size of oranges. So I'm going to just skin them and then I'm going to throw them right in. When you skin them, you want to be able to see the, uh, the fibrous things that hold in the juice, I guess, whatever. I don't know what it's called, but. I don't know why I find this easier than actually just using my little citrus juicer, but I feel like once I have the juicer out, I have to use it for everything I am doing. Also, I don't mind if I lose a little bit of the uh, juice from these because I just picked them in my yard. The one thing about using limes from your garden or whatever, or just from urban foraging is that they might have seeds in them. But I don't think it's really gonna affect the flavor if I get some seeds in there. Okay, so we have, I have six limes um, that I'm gonna throw into this two and a half gallon batch. We'll see how much juice we get from these. I got about one and a third cup from that. 
Okay, so I'm gonna add this cup and a third of lime juice to my strawberry juice and I'm gonna start pasteurizing it. I've got my strawberry and lime juice in this pot um, ready to pasteurize. I'm going to pasteurize it at 160 degrees for 15 seconds. Um, and that should kill everything. And while that's going, I'm going to sanitize and muddle my mint leaves. And then we can throw everything into a corny keg. I think the mint leaves I'm going to put into a hot bag um, so that they just don't get everywhere and so that they don't clog the spout. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just turn my burner on really low. And I've got my thermometer in here. So I'm just gonna bruise these mint leaves. I'm not gonna like try to make them into a pulp or anything. So here's my hot bag I'm gonna use. I should be stirring this nonstop, but I'm pretty bad at doing stuff like that. So I'm gonna Grab my keg and start filling it with water. I'm only gonna fill it halfway and then I'm gonna dump all the stuff in it. Okay, so that's pasteurized now. We hit 160 for 15 seconds. And then I'm just gonna tie this guy and dump him right in and then uh, keep filling the water and then we can go carbonate it. So I've got my soda ingredients in here and now I'm just going to carbonate it. So I'm gonna set my PSI at 30 and I'm going to attach it to the liquid line, um, which is on ball lock kegs, it's the ones without the notches in the uh, sides of the post. Um, so 30. So now that the bubbling is slowed down, I'm actually going to roll it so that the carbonation, um, basically when you shake it, you create more surface uh, area for the liquid and the CO2 mixes better. So. Um, because this is not cold yet, um, it's not going to carbonate as easily, so the rolling will help. And then I'm going to stick it right into my kegerator, and it should be good to go probably by tonight. Uh, eh, it usually takes about 24 hours to cool down, so in 24 hours it'll be ready to drink. 